What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the X Foils podcast. I'm Dylan, your host. Thank you for tuning in. I'm back in our fake studio here in the shop in San Juan, Puerto Rico. It's nice to be back. Um, it was a lot of good travels, a lot of good people. The event was super fun. I have Gio coming in. Uh, he's going to be here in like three minutes. And I wanted to get him back on the podcast because he's been on twice. One, talking about his adventure into downwinding, which, you know, he's just a nutcase, like just full on dedicated to this sport. And he still is. You know, I wanted to talk to him because he bought like some pretty small boards from me and small foils. And he's paddling up and doing downwinders in just minimal, crazy, tiny conditions here in Puerto Rico. Um, so he's on a different level than, I mean, than me, that's for sure. I wouldn't be able to do the things that he's doing. First of all, I wanted to get him in here and do a recap of the race because he was super stoked on the race. Uh, he was very nervous about it from what I heard from the guys. So it was good to, I wanted to get him back in here and get his take on the race and equipment choice and, and how that felt and how it was to be part of that community because he's never been around so many downwinders. He's never been in Maui before. His downwinding consisted of being here in Puerto Rico and pretty much doing runs alone, honestly. Like, there's not a lot of us and it's hard to coordinate and he's doing runs that we just can't do. So he's just doing runs alone. Um, and then he told me when I said, hey, I want you on the podcast. He's like, yeah, I can come because on the 8th of October... I'm going to some races in France. I'm like, even better. So we'll talk about that as well. Um, so thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, stoked to be back here in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Wave season is kicking up. Uh, I do have X-Foils hats. So if you guys want to support the show, I do this on my own time, uh, among a lot of other things that I do. And if you guys want to help support this cause, you guys can buy some X-Foils hats. Uh, I've got a gray khaki camo and a green and a black. Uh, they're pretty sick. So head out to kitepuertorico.com and you can search in the bar X foils and you'll find the hats and we'll ship them out to you. Thank you everybody for the support, for listening. And yeah, if you guys want to watch this and see me interact with Geo, it's on our YouTube channel for those that are listening on the podcast, uh, Shopify, uh, Spotify and uh, Apple podcast. YouTube, Kite Puerto Rico, N1 Water Sports YouTube channel. Uh, thank you guys for the support. Super stoked. And we'll see you guys in the next one. You. Like the wind at the event was not great. But the week before, you guys scored. And, and that's like, what I think is and like. And a couple days after, like, Randy scored some Rufus yeah, runs, which is yeah. sick. Yeah, but no, we had a great time, and I was kind of happy that there wasn't much wind at the event because it was just so busy, you know, sessioned out. And, well, for us, because I'm works a retailer, out. and I got to meet all the people. And Yeah, you know, if you're, if you're business deal, riding the whole time down. during the event, you're going to make, hard. you're going to, like, miss out on opportunities. Yeah. and Yeah, people are, man, when it's windy at the event site, and everyone's, like, the setup, and then people are taking gear, and you're trying to nail yeah. them down to, like, you know, make sure you get orders <laughs> in, and, like, it's it's hectic. It's crazy. So... It was a good event. Um, what's up, Gio? How's it going, Dylan? Welcome back to the X Foils podcast. Happy to be here, man. Third time. Is this the third? Oh, it is yeah. the third time. Yeah, we did the first one, and then with Roy. Yep. Yeah, oh, like the time. before the race. People are just gonna get bored of me, man. No. What is this guy again? They're bored of me. <laughs> they don't want to hear me talking anymore. I've heard it before. So. <laughs> They're like, "Hey, you gotta stop talking so much." I'm like, "Well, you're a good host." Some, some I people think just it's... don't talk. It's those generic foiling podcast guys that they, they, they're like the bullies, right? They bully you. <laughs> they bully no. you around. No, I'm just joking. No, no, they were, they were super, super nice, man. They're super funny. I love, I actually, that might have been one of the first uh, foiling podcasts that I started listening to because they've been doing it for longer than you, right? Oh, yeah. yeah Quite yeah. A, like yeah. a bit. I think they've got like 80 something episodes and. I mean, they yeah, they always crack me up. It's yeah, just, they're they're super they're, funny. That duo is like you know, they're just, I don't know, they just work. Yeah, it, it was cool to it was cool to see them at the event because I think by the, I think the first or the second day of the event, it kind of settled in mm. that they've got a job to do, you know, <laughs> like because yeah. you know at the beginning we're all sessioning and like everyone's hanging out and they're they're trying to dip in and get podcasts here and there I think and it, it was really hard because everyone was running around and busy. And then when the event happened, they're like, you know, looking at all the goodies and then they're like, oh, 
we've got a job. Like, yeah, we've, we've got, got work like to do. Ton of people and I saw to... them like all day, dude, like sitting down with somebody. I was like, holy crap, sitting down with somebody. I'm like, holy, like <laughs> all day. And I was like, dude, you guys got to be <laughs> podcast out. Like, and they, I mean, mission see, accomplished then, you know, know I mean, they got, I'm stoked for their followers and for me because I love listening to them. I've know? listened to all of the stuff that they did at AWSI. There's, there's a, there's quite a few episodes oh, I haven't still watched. still a bunch coming out. Yeah. They've recorded a lot more than that. Yeah. I did one with them. But so. the one with code, uh, the code guys, Ben and Marcus cool. was really good. And then, uh, the one with Cynthia was really entertaining as well. I, yeah. I liked it. Yeah, I wanted to get you on because people were asking. I had a couple people actually asking, like, hey, you got to do a recap with Roy and Gio. Mm. I'm like, about the race, right? So that's why I contacted you. I'm like, well, let's sit down and talk about the race. And then you're like, yeah, let's hurry up and do it because in a week I'm going to another race. And I was like, (laughs) perfect, even better content, you know? And I don't want to talk to Roy. Like, no one wants to hear about his racing. (laughs) Like, honestly, he's not... He's Why? Not really, he's not in it for the same reasons that you are, right? Well, I mean, but Roy's a hell of a like athlete. NPR, yeah. yeah I mean, Roy is a hell of a rider, hell yeah. of a racer too. Like oh, he beats sure. all of us here. Like, his his, his, his yeah. podcast actually perform really well because he's super funny. You know, oh, I mean, he's yeah, such a character. Um, I've got I've got zero in that department. So <laughs> yeah, I, you know, get props to Roy for yeah, for being making entertaining. being entertaining. Yeah, yeah, um, um, yeah. because. Apart from the like the recap of like the the races and stuff, you just bought the eighty eight liter dragonfly mm. from me, and I was like, <laughs> "What the hell?" Like I didn't know what he wanted. I'm like, "He's a, he's getting into para winging." That's what I thought. I'm like, "That's it. He's a para winger now." Yeah. Um. But then you're, you know, it's we're off season right now. Yeah. Uh, for the wind, right? Yeah, it's, it's really season, is- so it's very like eh, hit or miss, storms here and there. But we are getting some swell, mm-hmm. which is good. But I saw you out there on the 88 liter. What is it? Six six. Yeah, it's a six six, six, six by eighteen. With your on your code six eighty and a one twenty tail, doing downwinders yeah. in thirteen knots. Like, what are you doing, dude? What are you doing out there? Oh wow! Well, <laughs> you know when I when I purchased the board, yeah, it, it was funny to me. Like you didn't even ask. So I thought in my mind, I'm well, like, I didn't people, want to, I I didn't want to gonna, burn a sale. Well, yeah, <laughs> but I was like, what? Yeah, you know, he's probably going to para wing, right? Um, and in a way, it kind of is a decent hybrid board for yeah, that kind of thing because so it's not as long as the downwind boards that kind of yeah. cause problems. Yeah. But it's not so short that I, I, mean, the, I won't be able to paddle beautiful. it up. Yeah. It it's a really beautiful cool. board. I mean, the construction yeah. from V1 to V2 yeah. feels totally improved really? you feel like, like it's stiffer oh it's just my god it's my, look you know i'm kind of sloppy with my boards i've already had a beating on the rocks coming into san juan bay oh was that the, yeah with the new one the it's one? like bomber the v2 the oh, really? six six yeah what happened to your kalama because i saw the uh, kalama Randy that's the uh, that's the polar opposite the kalama is like super sensitive Delicate. the glassing oh. is like Very you thin. know at least on this custom which was mickey's yeah um and that's it's it's just you know got like a few sc- battle scars that were taking in water yeah so i sent it into randy to just get it patched up and yeah. cuz it's a really good board as well i really enjoyed ri- writing that board but yeah this this whole thing uh, you, mm, i have to put the blame on the western australia guys like uh andrew reedhead and julian bradley mm-hmm. um Donnie, Don, Donnie, I'm sorry, I don't know your first name. I just know you as Donnie. I think that's his last name. <laughs> um, and they've just been like, oh, and uh, also Dan Youngling from Code. Uh, he used to ride short boards too. So they're riding these really short boards and riding small foils on these really short boards. And I'm, I saw them in Hawaii. I saw, you know, that's where like it all came uh, you know, into my eyes was watching Julian Bradley at Kihei, yeah. riding a six four, I think, huh. and on a set. I think he was on a seven twenty or a six fifteen S. I was just like, "What is this guy doing? How 615S. is he?" Six fifteen S. Yeah, that's even harder. Yeah. I mean, it was good Kihei. Yeah, um, Kihei's awesome. But just in my mind, I was just blown away at the fact that it was even, you know, doable. So me being me and and kind of just. <laughs> A lot of people here would say that I'm a masochist in a way with downwinding, but it's just I I don't know. There's there's 
something about figuring all these little nooks and crannies of, of specific areas of downwinding out. Uh -huh. And every time I figure one thing out, I want to like push into the next one. It's just, I guess it's just part of who I am. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I mean, I'm, um, I'm very similar. I'll you tell know. you what though. I think this 88 liter board at the first, the first day on it, it took me a little under an hour, like 55 minutes to get my first paddle up. It was a light day and I was on the wrong foil like I always am. <laughs> you know, I was on the 680. We got to talk about why I was on the 680 because I made this whole thing where I was like, all right, September, I'm going to be on the 680 for every single run. But we can talk about that later. Um, but you get used to it and it's, it's honestly like, it's what, it's the same as any paddle up just more effort yeah yeah. the technique sort of remains the same you just have to keep your board up to speed and know when to pull the trigger yeah but pulling the trigger it's imagine that trigger is like really hard and yeah. you gotta put a lot of power down yeah are you like paddling you feel like you're paddling a lot more yeah you like have to, initially to <clears throat> maintain speed so you keep a little exactly bit of float because you're not like on my board i'm just waiting kind of like paddling water yeah and i wait for it and then i like then i go because i'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm 115 yeah. liters or whatever yeah that's exactly I'm still it. horrible at paddling up honestly like but that's exactly it it's you a, a board if you're going to be under under volumed and on a small board you want to keep it up to speed because it just it means you're more stable yeah and the more stable you are, the more power you'll be able to put down once you once that right bump comes along. So it's really just that, like. And what ends up happening is like, okay, if you start paddling just to keep up to speed, and that bump doesn't come around, you get tired and you have to rest. Yeah, that's that's the trade off. And but why do you want to be on such a small board? Oh, it feels amazing when you're up on foil. Yeah, it feels incredible. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's worth the effort. <laughs> yeah. I, to me, it's so far, yeah. yeah. I mean, and I think I'll get even better at it. Consider that I've been going out on a 680 on 12 knots. Yeah. Like, I went out one day that was really there's good. there's a little bit of swell, or no? Is that just wind, like, No, no, knots, no. There's, wind. if there was, there's some ground swell. Yeah. But honestly, I don't know that the ground swell is really helping, helping too much on the paddle up. It's helping more when you're on foil, um, which is kind of... Do you think you're better at paddling up than you are on foil? <laughs> probably <laughs> probably i fall a lot yeah i mean although this small board has made me do dry runs because i just don't want to paddle up again yeah <laughs> i mean so yeah. that's exactly why that's exactly why the parawing is so popular yeah it's the same you, you said it you're yeah. like well when you're up on foil it's amazing yeah. to be on this small board but yeah. who the hell is going to paddle up like paddling up in general is hard right so yeah. Paddling up a tiny board, like, I'm not going to go to an 88-liter board to paddle it up. Like, I just don't have... Yeah, I'm coming for that I mean, paddling pretty soon, I think. I mean, <laughs> I, I wanted to do this... This, um, I wanted to go through this process of finding a board that's small enough that could do both, that I, yeah. that I knew that I could paddle up confidently. So, Roy ordered that same board. Nice. He called me two days ago, and he's like, what should I do? You know, because he's on the, the mid-length, the Super K. Okay. He's on a 70-liter. He had, like, a custom that he didn't like that he left in Hood River. And he was oh, thinking the red of, one, yeah? Yeah, yeah the red yeah, one. It, board, just, yeah. it was a custom wing board, and yeah. it, it's got, like, a little bit more volume in the nose, and he didn't mm. love, because he stands so far forward, he doesn't love that bump. Yeah. Like, that little, like, weird forehead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the little lump yeah. on there, yeah. Um, so he was asking me about your board, and I'm like, I have no idea, dude. I'm like, you just have to go out with geo you guys should swap he can paddle up your 70 liter um i don't think K. i'll be able to do that one <laughs> i'm like tell him that he can't and then he'll take your board <laughs> but i mean so so that's what he's going to do is that that same board i think it's short enough it's like yeah. a downwind board it's narrow enough like he doesn't want to go too wide you know he said when i stand there and i see there's too much board left on the edges of my feet that was like, exactly my thought process is uh, with I had the 7.4 KT, the Dragonfly, the first version. Um, and the one... Five liter. The yeah. One, yeah. The one thing that, that kind of nagged me about that board was uh, I, I kept catching rails when I was banking hard on turns mm -hmm. and I would fall. And so that was... I think that board's 19 and a half. 
And when I went down to an 18 wide board, then it never happened again. The Barracuda. And so I was just like, this 18 is like perfect, I think. You know, in terms of, I mean, you know, you could go narrower for a race board. Like mm -hmm. my Frank board is 16 and it really works for racing because it just glides so fast. And, you know, that's what you want in a race. You just want yeah. to be able to get up and go, on yeah, demand. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that, so I think, just getting back to the para wing really quick, that board, I was trying to find a board that, could, that I could do both with. Um, it's maybe not the perfect board for either discipline, right? But it, it works. Yeah. But, man, the para wing, in, in my opinion, where, it, to me, where it's really going to shine here is especially down south finding you know how down south here in puerto rico it's kind of hard to find to get to be able to get out enough to do some runs yeah because there's all these little islands and all these little nooks and crannies yeah, that make it boat, hard right yeah exactly you got to get a boat man the, the paddling opens up the south for us here in yeah. a way that the paddle can't do Mm. Or and then otherwise you have to do a boat. Yeah. So like I've already scoped out. There's runs in like um, from Guanica to Cabo Rojo. You can do Guayama to Ponce, which has all these little islands out there that kind of mess you up. And on a good wind, and you know how the wind is stronger down yeah. there as well. Yeah, so. yeah. It's in, I haven't ridden one. I had known nothing about how it feels, so I can't really talk yeah. to that. But I think I found a board that's a good hybrid. Yeah. In that. Yeah, I think that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't asking you, and I, I actually didn't think you were going to, were thinking about the para wing at all, honestly. I just <laughs> thought you wanted the challenge it, like, yeah, paddling. I, and I spoke to, you know, I spoke with Julian. With, Julian's been like my main sort of like, you know, shortboard guru. Hey, Julian. Because <laughs> um, I got curious about it, and I just started asking him questions. And he's like, look, I'm, I just made myself a six-foot board that's, Maybe I think it was like eighty six liters, so it's eleven liters above his 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 weight in kilograms. Mm -hmm. And so, I, and he's shorter than me, so and a little a little lighter. So I just I was like, all right, so this KT is like right around that ballpark, eleven eleven um, liters of volume more than me, mm -hmm. and you know, tall enough that that I'll be able to balance it out. And man, it's been it's been a lot of fun riding that board. I gotta give it to those guys. That I mean, I love it. I love that board. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 so much fun being on a smaller board. It's super stiff. Well, you don't you know you don't prone either. Right? This is my version of proning, basically. Like you know, right? And, so I, I get we get that. I get that from proning. I still yeah. prone, right? I was proning the other day, like last week, and go you and yeah, you're on a four foot board. <clears throat> Right, and you're surfing. It's the waves. It's different, right? But being on a small board, I get that from that. And yeah, I mean, I I understand where you're coming from for sure. It's, but nobody can. I mean, it's so hard to paddle that thing up. You know, it's just <laughs> that's why we come back to the yeah. pair wing. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That thing people. is that thing is going to be sick for a lot of people, for sure. Yeah, for for popping up and going downwind, great. For being able to do like upwinders with it, you're gonna have to be pretty skilled. There's yeah. there's a quite a learning curve to it for I sure. I think I, there are parts of the para wing that also, at least me, because I can paddle up this this small board. I'll probably be using it in less situations. Yeah. And I just I I've, I've been out and you've been out in days on a kite where you were way out to sea and the wind died. Oh, yeah. And you're sucks. swimming in on a twin tip. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, it's... it's uh, And, the, and the, the possibility of that is there on our downwinders where we're even way further out to sea than, than when we are when we're kiting. Yeah. Um, and that's really the only real drawback that I could think of, you know, for our conditions. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's, it's, another, it's another tool in the bag, you know. It's just yeah, another way to, way to do it. Um, so let's talk about the races. Because let's do it. Um, the only you know, experience you have with downwinding was Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. you know? And I, was, I did like a little intro before you came in. And I was thinking that you don't really downwind with anybody. 
right? Because you're doing <laughs> you're doing runs that we don't want to do or that we're not doing or you're just you're just fully <laughs> into it, right? I don't have the time to always do it and then to coordinate that it get, becomes complicated. You're on the go. So you're yeah. just you're essentially just doing downwinders by yourself. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm pretty much, especially after Hawaii, and even a little bit before. I think I, once I figured out the whole Uber thing, it, it gets a little expensive for sure. But the way that we've been doing runs here, there was always some sort of taxi involved. Yep. So there was like, there's not a big, uh, a huge drawback from just doing them on uber and there's a huge upside and that upside is that um i can time i can time the run that like specifically right so I, i'll look at conditions every morning and they're very variable here so like yeah. sometimes you know you see a rain cloud that's gonna set in at two o'clock you want to go before mm -hmm. or you see that the wind is gonna jack up at four in the afternoon that's when you want to be out there yeah. so i kind of work my schedule around downwinding really um just because it's like the one thing that i want to do the most um and but that experience i mean i put in a ton of time you know this like you know suffering and and, and nobody wanted to like do the runs that i wanted to do i just i don't know maybe it's just i have a you know one track mind with with this whole thing but it definitely helped uh, quite a bit in just just having the confidence to be like I'm ready to go do these races in Hawaii. You know, I don't you know I don't care about a result or anything. Just just like the the endurance and the the confidence in my skills mm -hmm. to be able to go there and not finish dead last. Sorry to whoever finished last. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying. I'm not trying to be a dick. Well, I'm just saying someone like someone has to finish last. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just saying like that was the one sort of like okay, please just don't be last. And I thought <laughs> I was gonna be my. Um, you thought coming into the races you were gonna be last. No, or while you were in when, the races. Yeah, when so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had I had a bunch of mishaps, and and it's just such a good experience because of exactly that. Like, yeah, it's. It's not just the fact that you're in Hawaii and you're in the presence of like the best foilers in the world. Mm -hmm. It's it's the just that uh, the, what do you call it? Just the, uh, el ambiente, um, mm -hmm. the just environment, the, the environment yeah. of racing. Yeah, it brings out some like you know just. Makes you make, other, it makes you do some make some bad decisions. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, you get jitter. I, I, like, I've heard it. It was so funny because yeah. they're like, oh, man, the wind's getting light, and oh, it's a race. And he's yeah, like, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm putting on this foil. <laughs> and, and then after, he's like, man, I, I've never ridden that foil before. I'm like, great. Like, I think a lot of that was happening, especially for the Maui to Molokai yeah. race. Yeah, someone, <laughs> I, I can't remember who it was in yeah. Yeah, I, I can't think, remember and, who it was. Damn, I think it was Elliot uh, was telling me he's like, yeah, I put on my two twenty, you know, lift, and so that was my biggest foil, and I was, and I'd never used it before. Elliot's, like, Elliot's a big guy, though. Yeah, yeah, he's riding some yeah. code now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what can I say about the races? I mean, first of all, you have to give it to all these organizations, like they're they really pour their heart out on this stuff. It's the paddling community, the downwinding community in general. It doesn't matter what the vessel is. Man, it's... Next year, you should try and make it out for the races. I know that you had just a newborn child and it's going to be tough. And, but there's just this ambience there where it's like, man, it's, I know, we're, for sure. we're around... I I can sense you know, it. I was yeah. there just after, so I, I got like the after a, rush, a and people bit were more it, relaxed, yeah. which was nice. Yeah, yeah. Because I got to get there. Everyone had already done the race. Everyone was just doing runs for fun now. Yeah, we're yeah. surfing. We're doing kihei's. I think the before was probably more intense, and people yeah. are like trying to like you know push it, which yeah. is great as well. And that it's a different environment. And I've been around the water sports so long that yeah, I can I know what the competition kind of environment feels like but foiling is so different you know 
I, there's yeah. I don't know if there's there's not many people out there like that. That's I've never enemy. really competed in sports in 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 uh, like I've only ever competed in team sports uh, in in my past. Yeah. So like. Well, this kind yeah. of feels like a team sport, <laughs> yeah. almost. I mean, you're competing against, for yourself, you know, yeah. against everybody, soul. Like, yeah. you know, but it, it feels more like a team. You yeah, know? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. The yeah. setting is different. It's, I don't know. there's I don't a know lot of camaraderie in the yeah. water and there's definitely people you're pulling for in a way, you know? <laughs> um, I would say, look, you know, Paddy Mua, for example, let's, let's go through the races. Paddy Mua was, to me, it was like the most uh, community engaging race where like, you know, it's just everyone's, you know, everyone's heart is in in the in the cause, yeah. And just spending a, having a great day around one another. At the end, everybody like has uh, everybody meets up at uh, Kanaha, and there's like a you know big kind of like a almost like a luau, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of food. There's live music. Um, everyone just hangs out. Um, and but everything starts to get a little more serious after that. Like, yeah. Um, when you, when you're going to do a channel crossing, um, you know, there's like logistics involved, and and obviously the stakes are higher. You're out in the middle of the sea of the ocean, longer miles. You got to be more ready. You know, you, uh, fail uh, equipment failure or or a lack of judgment on your part with like you know whatever your your gear or or your supplements on the way and yeah. beforehand can cost you yeah. quite a bit. So the second race, which was uh, Maui to Molokai, yeah, that's the one where everyone was worried. It was like light out. Um, but it ended up picking up, and I went, that race I did on the 770, I was going to take the 860 at first, but then I saw uh, Jersey Boy. Jersey Boy. <laughs> do, do you remember Jer <laughs> <Yes>. Ed? <laughs> And, and he was going on his 860, and he's probably, like, you know. So so I was like, man, if he's going to suffer on the 860, I'm going to suffer on the 770. Fuck it. You know, like, let's do this. Um, he didn't end up suffering, and neither did I. We actually, I think we actually both had pretty decent runs. Um, I had a really bad start, though. There was there were There weren't as many boats out there, but there was one boat that, Man, I don't know if anybody else noticed this, but there was one boat in Paddle, uh, Maui to, or, yeah, Maui to Molokai that was just crossing back and forth right in front of the lineup before, before the bell rang mm -hmm. or before the flag came down. Yeah. And I was just like, what is this boat doing? He's creating wake for everybody. Yeah. And, and then there were a couple of other, uh, support boats or uh, they're just like, for for that race, you can have an optional boat, mm -hmm. right? And so when I went to paddle up, um, I fell because of that. Did you first... have a boat? No, no, not me. Because you not were that. staying, you were staying in Maui, mm -hmm. and then you crossed to Molokai. Yeah. And from there, you go to Oahu, right? Yeah. Um, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So and you left from Oahu home. So yeah, you I never came, came home. back to Maui. I never went back. So to how'd Maui. your how'd all your stuff get to? So there's a there's Maui. yeah there's a cargo boat, a luggage boat that goes from Maui to Molokai. Uh -huh. So when you register for the race, you can buy extra luggage uh, oh, I see. on that boat. So once you get to Molokai, your luggage is there. And since you you needed a boat to go from Molokai to Oahu, oh, you just put all your stuff I just on that put boat. all okay. my boat my stuff on that boat. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, logistically, that whole three day span is is pretty hectic. Like yeah. you gotta you gotta plan everything, and you have to have it all in order. Because one thing, and you, either your luggage is staying in Maui or so you're not you're, going. So when you're standing to do the M to M, you're on the beach. You're looking at the conditions. You're trying to decide what foil to take. Where are your foils? How do you get them on the cargo boat? Is the cargo boat there? There's in a the jet same ski. Setting? Yeah, there's a jet ski that's coming to the beach, mm -hmm. um, and just taking like there's a line that people are forming because. Oh, I see. So it wasn't like the cargo ship was like you know, 
over there. You had to leave all your kid on. It was like you could leave your stuff on the beach and they could take it. Like, yeah, they take just it before the race. Yeah, okay. just well, before the helpful. race, right there. Yeah, I mean, think about it. Like, there's a lot of people from Oahu doing the race, right? Yeah. They're not going to go back to Maui either, and so they're yeah, like, for sure. I'm but, just, but they want like to be able to choose a foil well. on the day of. Yeah, you know, that's kind of like how it goes. You know, yeah. you never know. Like, if you just, I mean, I guess Roy did the thing where he brought only his nine thirty. That's the Armstrong one, the nine thirty, something like that. Yeah. And he only brought that foil, and then he had That's to get the smaller one. Uh, I think it got choppered in. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think it got brought in on a chopper uh, from someone he knew that was bringing, that was coming to the race That's so for uh, M2O. Um, but yeah, so terrible paddle up. I had a terrible start for M2M. Um, and I, I was like, I looked back. And I was just like, I couldn't, I didn't see anybody behind me. I, th I swear I was dead last. Um, and I just sat there. I'm just like, man, this is it. That's like, I fucked it, you know? So, but eventually I paddled up and luckily I chose that 770 and it was, I, I overtook a ton of people on it. Um, just because I think people were going bigger because they yeah. weren't sure. Yeah. Um, and the only time that I think I paid the price for the smaller foil was at the very end when it gets flat uh, towards the uh, Molokai Wharf. Um, so I lost a few places there to people on bigger foils. Um, I can't remember what place I got, but it's the middle of the pack somewhere. Yeah, There was like 120-something. I was like 60s around there. Um, That's pretty but good. super fun race. I mean, I, I, you're going to hear people say this, but it's, I think it's the best crossing. Like, you know, there's just a lot less crossy up conditions. It's just yeah. really lined up. And did you do that run before? No, the race. No, we were going to, we were going to, with, um, a, a crew of people uh, we we're going to go on a boat and Frank was trying to set it up. But it got canceled. Like we were gonna do a practice run, mm -hmm. but it got canceled like, you know, a couple of days before we were gonna go. But it wasn't, you know. I just kept people, uh, kept hearing people say, you know, don't come in too soon. Because there's these like, there's these reefs, outer reefs there, um, and it just kind of flattens out. So I just stayed out to see, stayed out to see, and once I started seeing, uh, the wharf and. It, it's a beautiful landscape there. When you're going down the coast of Molokai, there's these huge mountains and ridges. It's really just beautiful. Um, but you can you can basically see the only building. It's like this white building and the wharf there. And you know, like, okay, that's where I'm going. Yeah. So it doesn't matter that you don't know the run. Yeah. You just have to have this one sort yeah. of place dialed in. And just point to that. Yeah, I um, hate I hate doing a run and not knowing where I'm going. Yeah, and like you're up, and the whole time you're like, uh oh, yeah, where yeah. Am I going? You're like, yeah. Oh, and you're looking at the coastline. You're like, where am I going? Like, where am I going? Like, I, I don't want to miss it. <laughs> I did a run here on the north coast from uh, Vega Baja to Arecibo. No, sorry, this day was from Cabras to Vega Baja. That's where I wanted to go. But oh, I didn't. I it. didn't know the run. I didn't because I'd never done it. So I missed it by like four miles and ended up in Manati. Um, so I had to like do the whole logistics thing different, you know, to get picked up. Um, yeah, that sucks. So, so you end up in the Molokai, middle middle of the middle of the pack, and yeah. you had a hotel on Molokai. You were staying at? Or no, staying at we house, we got or? we got set up. Um, Who are we? So I all right. When I started putting out the, you know, just that I was going to go to Hawaii. Uh, Victor here from Luquillo, uh -huh. he hit me up and he's like, "Hey, I know uh, this person uh, that lives on Molokai um, that I can set you up with for help and rides and stuff." Uh, Minka Nelson is her name. And so I just reached out to her. Hey, you know, like, um, 
I hear logistics is really hard in Molokai. I was wondering if, you know, you can help us out with rides and stuff. I wasn't even looking for, like, you're going to ask her for a place to stay. Because there's a couple of hotels, and most, most of the foilers doing the races were staying either in, uh, I think it's Molokai, Molokai Shores or Molokai Hotel. Or Hotel Molokai, there's Molokai Shores. And then there's another place out in the west that people were staying at. But this lady, Minka, Minka, thank you so much for setting us up. Um, she was like, hey, you know what? I've got a place where you guys can stay and, and be there for the weekend and I'll you know, show you guys around. And it was an awesome experience because, honestly, moving around in Molokai is not like it's not like you just call an Uber and, or get a taxi. It's yeah. just like you're on your own pretty yeah. much. You got to figure it out. <laughs> um but it's 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 also what makes it a, a a really exciting place. I think you know it's just it's a different speed, man. Yeah. You know, there's and I think it's kind of you know re maybe reminiscent to like being out in Vieques or Culebra, but a little bit larger scale. Yeah. You know, that's what I would compare it to that here sense, yeah. in terms of like accessibility to things and stuff. Um. So yeah, so we stayed with with Minka, and it was me and Roy. And the night before um, M two O, so there's a, there's a few things that happen in between. You've got like these meetings that you have to go to to talk about the you know Logistics how the how it's all going to go, yeah. safety and all that. Um, and there's these dinners and stuff. So it's, it's really like it's again, it's like everyone just kind of meeting up and. And hanging out. But M2O, the lead up to that was brutal for me. Like, I just, uh, the night before, I couldn't sleep. I, so I've, I, I'll put, put some context in here. Like, you know, I've been seeing M2O, like Molokai to Oahu, as a crossing since I was a kid. Like, I plastered on, on surf magazines and, like, you know, just, it's, it's very much been part of surf culture and in, in terms of it's a really important race for hawaiians mm -hmm. um you know it, it like channel of bones and everything but it's also i, I think it harkens back to eddie Aikau, uh which is a famous surfer who died trying to save um trying trying to paddle to land and i believe it was um I might be wrong here, but I, I, I believe it was in that area, in that channel, where he lost his life and was never seen again. So there's like also like a, you know, uh, yeah. just a mystery to the whole thing. Um, and so, so you're pretty much just yeah, freaking out. I mean, I was just I, I got in my own head. Really, that's really what ended up happening. So I just I couldn't sleep. I had this little voice in my head all night. You know, I couldn't sleep at all. Um, and so I was, I did the race on an hour of sleep, which is like, a cop, maybe sounding like an excuse and a cop out, but like, it just, I fell around 20 times, which is a ton, you That's know, a lot, yeah. and I just felt it. Like I just, 20 you know, times. I don't, keeping the, the whole, um, you know, a lot of people have been talking about the escort boats being a problem and all the backwash. And while that is true, you know, plenty of people made it without falling 20 times, you know. So I, I really had a terrible, absolutely terrible race. Um, I was watching you guys on the dots. Oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of... I remember last I year watching with, it. I don't yeah. know who I was chatting with. I think I was, oh, I was texting with uh, Mickey. Okay. I was texting yeah. with Mickey. I had the dots up on my... Oh, because he was on Maui, yeah. Yeah, I had the yeah. dots up on my laptop and I had, you know, because you can select them so the names pop up because there's just dots everywhere. So I selected a bunch of people, you know, I'm like, oh, Ryan Arzi and Roy and yeah, you yeah, yeah. and Marley and, you know, yeah. I, I had a select few, you know, yeah. the, the, you know, Kane and Edo and I, I had all these dots up and I was watching them. And then I was on Instagram trying to find as many live feeds as I could. You know, yeah. Edo's girlfriend was doing a live feed, which yeah. they were up at the front. 
I you had like the whole King sports just, bar going. Yeah. And I was watching that and then I was texting <laughs> Mickey on the side. I'm like, oh shit, Geo's down. Oh no, what happened to Roy? You know, and all you're doing is watching these these dots. But it's so it turns exciting. out also that some of the some of the dots and the GPS is, are actually on the boats. On the boats, yeah. They're not actually the riders. So yeah. it's like I was like, ah, oh, when I found out when I when yeah. I found out that Edo's dot was on the boat. Yeah, not on him. It was yeah. hard to calculate where people were, so I was trying to watch the feed, and I was just watching the top, right? Like when you're in the yeah. middle, you have no idea what's going on. Like there's a live feed in the middle, you're just like, who the hell? Like where are you? What is that? Yeah, who but honestly, people? you you are kind of getting a really good representation though, because those boats are hugging these guys. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. they're just right I mean, on their tail. Run, run people over. Man. Yeah, it if was. Someone falls. It was like, intense, dude. These boats are enough. going way too fast. I mean, imagine. You know, just, I've I've heard it like yeah. There's a bunch of people that have done like recaps of the race and stuff. Yeah, I, I don't I don't listen to all of them. Um, and it's yeah, it's a super common theme is talking about the boats, right? Yeah. And one of them was, yeah, like you're you're going, the foilers are so fast compared to like what the boat escorts were or are for people that are proning or like paddling 14 footers. Yeah. Like you can keep up to speed and you're, you're like cruising and you're hanging out with them. But the foilers, my God, man, they're yeah. flying. Like Edo was flying at like yeah, yeah, 25 yeah, yeah. miles an hour. Like it's, it was, it's probably, a, probably yes. more dangerous with the boats out there. Crazy. But you know what? I can't imagine trying to like stay up to speed on a boat like I was like, talking to my boat captain after the race. Um Kimberly is her name. She was a great captain. Um or you know, she she did a great job, I I felt. But I asked her, I was like, did the chan once once we were out in the middle of the channel, you know, and there were less boats around, was that still boat wake? Because even in the middle of the channel, dude, it's it's almost like it's just it changes so much. It's yeah. crazy, I and there's so much current. and And she was like, "No, that was that's just how the channel is." Oh, really? You know, she was oh. saying like, "Look, the the first third, maybe there was a lot of boat wake involved, but after that, like that's the channel." I think you'd be also. I think you'd be surprised at how far wake. Can water travel. movement can travel. Yeah. Like, I've been out there when a fishing boat goes by a mile off. Yeah. And you feel it like <laughs> yeah. for the next 15 minutes. Yeah. 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 You know? There's yeah. just it, like it, it just moves and bounces off things. And I yeah. think you'd be surprised for sure. The channel, I'm not saying that the channel is clean, groomed, like for sure it's all fucked. Mm. But I mean, the amount of boats that were out there and the amount wakes it's control and possible. how wakes hit wakes and how yeah. wakes hit boats like the amount of cross chop that's going on there but for sure it's not like once i got into a rhythm though like so i kept having a lot of falls i would say because you know because of how choppy the water was mm -hmm. and also because of my lack of sleep um i just felt tired um uh, but what Man, when I was going, I was on the 680. When I was going, I was flying, dude. That 680 was moving faster than I've ever moved on that 680 for sure. There was mountains of water. Like, it's you. I can't compare. I've never seen or felt that amount of energy in the ocean mm. on foil. Um, and a few days later, I did a run in Oahu on the North Shore. Yeah, you told Which me. Which was insane. Uh, just probably the best run I've ever had um, in terms of like conditions. But even that, and the North Shore of Hawaii is, it's a, like, that's a very energetic place. Mm -hmm. You know, water's moving from deep to shallow and it's coming fast. Mm -hmm. But even that didn't feel like this. Like the, the M2O, the energy out there was massive i don't know that's what i felt I and mean, there were some light spots there was some there was a there was a good chunk of time where the wind just died yeah uh but the residual bumps were so full of energy that you could just keep going yeah um but yeah when i was going my my the, the boat captain was like dude you were moving i was having to push my boat you know so you know that was the one takeaway from it i think you know 
Um, I had a re so one of the things that I would say is pay attention to where you're coming in. Oh, this is this is a huge. Let me talk about this real quick. I had just bought a GPS watch, my Garmin, <laughs> and it it messed me up because I was just learning how to use it. And during M two O, I for M two O and M two M, I had set a map, I had set a route. And you can actually see where you are, like in that line. Like an air, it, it directs you by arrow. Yeah. Positioning. Yeah, and and so you can see like, all right, you got to go north or you got to go south to stay on your line. Right. But on for M two O, something happened that it, it it glitched out on me, hmm. and I I couldn't see like I could see it, but I saw that it wasn't moving. I was like, it's in the same, it's been in the same place for for 45 minutes, huh. you know, and, and by that time I was already way farther out from Molokai, you know, so it messed me up it and, and it psyched, bit. yeah, it psyched me out and then I stopped using it. So I was like, all right, it's me, it's me against this, like just figure out. And I hadn't talked to my boat captain about a backup plan, which is my fault. Really? I should have been like, Hey, you know, if I'm heading too far South, like, you know, just get closer to me and push me north or something, you know, um, which is, I think, a strategy a lot of people do. Um, but, yeah, when I was getting close to Oahu, I, just, I was just way too far offshore. And the way the wind turns there, it starts to go more offshore. offshore. You hear that a lot of people say, like, when you're getting towards Diamond Head, the wind is already side offshore. And I was like, I don't know, five kilometers out to sea. Jesus. You know, so I was that the last, the last, I don't know, I want to say six or seven kilometers of the run, I was just cutting in, cutting in hard, pumping, pumping, cutting in, cutting in, because I knew I was like, Ugh. I'm way too far out here. Um so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of little gotchas, man. Did you feel like you were dead last in that race too? Or I did. did. You see people? No, no, I did. I felt well at the st at first I did, and then and then I did feel kind of middle of the pack. It just it, people get I mean, so far away from one another in that no, channel. There's no line. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, there's so well, much space. So one thing that was fun about that race is like, so I. At one point, Roy and I crossed paths, and he passed me. I don't know if did you I see that on the it, dots? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> you should have like recorded it on your phone. And I think I probably took a picture of it. But or something. dude, honestly, I gotta I I gotta say that that was the best feeling to see Roy there to see like someone that you downwind with all the time. Yeah. And at that point during the race, it was. Liter you were literally one minute before he came out, I was like thinking about getting on my boat. I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I, I'm so tired. I'm not gonna make it. You know, I just, I, I was, I would paddle up and fall, paddle up and fall, paddle up and fall, and it just, it was getting to my mind. It was, it was the mental aspect was getting yeah, to me. Course. And when I saw Roy, he's like, hey, doing his Indian calls and yeah. like, let's go, baby, and. I was like, oh, fuck, yeah, let's go. <laughs> you know, like it, it kind of injected me with some extra life. And, That's um, funny. And I paddled up, and I just... I'm going to look, yeah. look at my messages with, <laughs> with Mickey, because I'm sure I said something at that point, because I do yeah. remember you guys, like, literally right on top of each other. Um, yeah, that was... Man, that actually, I got to give it to... Thanks, Roy. Thanks for crossing paths. Like he just literally, I don't know how it was even possible that we did the same line, you know, because it's so, oh, that's like, it's uh, so easy to get away from one another there. Um, I said, but they're not changing the range. Blah, blah, blah. I said, Roy got geo. <laughs> yeah, he did. You know? And I think I took a photo of it. That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Look at that. There yeah. you guys are. Yeah. There's a video. Nice, dude. Right. Yeah, you got it. Exactly. That's that moment. Yeah. Giovanni yeah. And Roy Young. Hell yeah. You should put that up on the podcast <laughs> for sure. Like a whole 
<laughs> and we cross. <laughs> Why do these guys have to be together? Yeah, it's it's <laughs> crazy. Like, what the hell? Like how? It's crazy how that we met up. Meet? That's it's funny. Just, yeah, that's funny. it is funny, man. It's and that's, that's it great. just it definitely breathed some life into me because I was, at that point I was like, no, nah, I'm done. Oh. So yeah, <laughs> um, and then you get to the end, and man, I don't know, like, um. The ending was kind of weird. They had the boat was opposite of the buoy, like the. Well, they had to they, stay outside. Yeah, right? they had, they said yeah the boats had to stay outside, and they a lot of them didn't. Like I know I saw some, they were like, coming and crossing in, back in, and so they you know, the the inside, there that ending was also kind of a shit show, uh, in terms of boat wake, um, but I came in on the wrong side of the buoy, so I had to paddle back. Because they they had said I think they had said that the boat would be on the outside and the buoy would be on the outs inside and then you crossed in between, huh. but it ended up being the other way around. The buoy was on the outside and the boat was on the inside. I know. So I just had to like I passed the buoy because there was another random boat, so I thought that was the one. Oh. So I was like I had to paddle back in and and then the, and then they ring this the, the air horn. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was just a wild experience, but I'll say this, man, if there's anything I would say about the races in Hawaii, it's, it's, it's not about the races. It's about going there and being around the, the best of the best in the best conditions you can possibly find, you know? And, and the reason why that's why I'm coming into that and saying that is that when I, I realized it more when I got back to Puerto Rico, my level of of downwind foiling just like it just honestly I'm not trying to brag or anything. I just feel like I came back way better, dude. Like just my my perception of everything, how I'm reading, and that was just and like my efficiency and that's just from I think that was just from being there and watching the best people do the best the best runs yeah and just being around that well, and just you wow know, like, when you when you go it alone you can have a watch you can have gps you can have you know you can track your splits you can you can do all of that stuff but you never know how fast you really are or how good you really are absolutely. unless you line up with somebody exactly or a bunch of people you know exactly. so when you're doing these runs and yeah. you're paddling up and you're you've got somebody in front of you i mean or you got someone behind you there's a there's like a, a real gauge of of how you're doing in the field which is makes a huge difference in your progression you know yeah. that's why you got to ride with people like that's why when i kite i'd ride with somebody that's better than me or you know, i remember wing with arlen or go proning with it because it just it or towing like that it's this this trying to keep up you know and trying to step it up your level you. it pushes you yeah it pushes you, you, you know? yeah i had I remember my first Maliko run was a light day. Me and Roy went out, um, and we were we went out at the same time as a couple of uh, of the GoFoil guys. I think it was John John Hagen and um, oh, what's this kid's name? Max. Mm -hmm. I know Max. Um, there's two Maxes. It's the Max from that I guess is from and lives on Maui. Mm -hmm. the, Blonde, shorter blonde kid. There's another Max from Florida that rides for GoFoil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yep. And we all paddled up at the same time. I was on. I was on the 770 that day. It's just incredible how fast these two kids were gone. Like just split second gone. Can't see a single thing, you know. And you know they they were on similar sized foils, you know, it's not, they just had, uh, honestly, I'll be, I'll be frank. I don't think, I don't remember seeing them pumping away from me. They're just, there's something out there. There's, there's still some reading, advanced reading for speed involved, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I, I honestly, look, I will be the first to admit I am a very slow foiler. Like, I almost, I'm almost proud of how slow I can go on these small foils. Like, I'm not a fast guy. I don't, I don't, I don't think I've cracked that code yet at all. You know, so when I when I came back, um, 
I just focused like on you know just be efficient and and that's where the whole 680 thing for September came about. I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna ride the smallest foil I have and just figure it out. I don't care if it's 10 knots, 12 knots, 20 knots. That's and it's worked out. I've had really only two. Well, one really bad run down south that I went to experiment with. Bad idea. But then one, which was yesterday, one pump fest. Yesterday was kind of a pump fest on the 680. I was yesterday, able. The wind was also a little bit north. Yeah, yeah exactly. A little bit yeah. on shore. And so it was a swell. So, and then it was light. It was like, yeah. I think it maxed out at 13 knots or something yesterday. Yeah, 15 miles an hour tops. Yeah. Um, and when there's, when there's long periods swell like that, I'm still on the fence about whether or not I'd rather be on a fast foil for a long period. If the wind is light, I do know that well, on, look, you yeah. can only, you can only go so fast. Yeah. Yeah. There is I a, there's a, sometimes there's a I don't think being on a smaller foil necessarily means that you're going faster. No, it's so here's the, here's what I've been sort of gathering over the last month of only using the 680 is that if there is a long period swell and a decent amount of wind i prefer the small foil because it's really easy to go from high energy swell to high energy swell if it's light though you don't have that in between chop so you might be better off with the bigger foil, even if the period swell or the swell period is long. Mm -hmm. um, so yesterday, I probably could have been, I should have probably done something like the 860 or something. Not even the 770. The 860 probably would have been like, and the paddle ups would probably have been easier yeah. as well. Um, yeah. So well, it's an experiment. It's been an experiment, uh, but I'm glad. I'm I'm happy that September is coming to an end. <laughs> Because I'm, uh, yeah, it's today. So I'm like, I might do one more run on the 680 today if it picks up. Yeah, uh, it's, I was looking at the forecast. It looks like there might be something. Yeah. It's, it's going to be light, but yeah. Um, but that's it. Like, you know, uh, the experiment is done and, and I made it. So I'm one I'm mile happy. an hour west northwest. Yeah, nice. Let's do this. <laughs> Good to go. We'll see. It'll be windy in the afternoon with, in, before that rain. Um, so you're heading to France, Saint Tropez, and where else? It's it's well the main I think the the main race is uh, the Crozon Foil Festival, and it's not just downwinding. They do they have like a, a prone surf day, mm -hmm. which is on the tenth. Oh, I saw the list. Yeah, and I that I yeah, there's like forty that. four. There's a lot of people going. A lot of crew from Hawaii and Australia, and and definitely tons of Europeans. And a few Americans. So why'd you decide to to do that? Because you said it's coming up quick now. Yeah, it's and I like it's all been out. it's all been really kind of last minute uh, for me. Just you know, I, I still have things to sort out, a bunch of things really. Um, but I think it's again, it's 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 wanting to be around that sort of that sort of. Uh, highest level of competition not because i want to necessarily prove something but just to be around it you know it felt it, i felt really good being around it and just meeting these people and, and and just admiring their talent really um and so the community really comes down to that and then seeing fresh waters seeing something else having to wear a wetsuit it's going to be interesting you know um I think I've worn a wetsuit once in my entire life yeah. when I used to do scuba diving, you know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's a big race. It's kind of like the, I would say it's kind of equivalent to the Hawaiian races, but in Europe. It's probably the biggest race in Europe. It's like the most respected one. And it gets really windy up there. Uh, there's a video from last year's race that uh, Jack Ho has up on YouTube. Oh, I uh, saw that. Yeah. yeah. And he it says, like I mean, it, during that video, it's like, uh, he said it was like 50 knots or 40 knots or something like that. And yeah, he's like, the fastest I've ever been on a downwinder. So, it, you know, hopefully those conditions show up. I do have a kind of, you know, 
one of the things that I really love about downwinding is when conditions are gnarly. That is that is my favorite. Like I, the gnarlier it gets in terms of like high wind or or big swell, I I really those are the conditions I prefer to to test myself in. Um, lighter conditions are super fun, and but the, something about that just makes the adrenaline go up, and and that's that feeling More is exciting. Yeah, that that feeling just I I think I I look for it actively, you know. <laughs> um, so That's hopefully cool. we'll get some of that. And then there's another race uh, a week later in uh, Saint Tropez that um, uh, Fred Bonnef, uh, who's I think he's a duotone writer. Um, Fred, I'm sorry, I don't remember if you're Portuguese, French, or Spanish, but you speak all three, so. Um, he's like, he's a long time paddler from mm -hmm. Europe, from Western Europe. So he's putting on this race in St. Tropez. So it's like a Mediterranean yep. run and that's going to be nice to see. I've heard a lot of people talk about the Mediterranean being insane. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to head Do out something there. something different. Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll have to get the code guys to send you like a 600 R. <laughs> I'd love to. I, I tried that. I tried that foil in Maui. It was yeah. it was amazing, and it was light. It was like well, light for Maui. It was like eighteen knots that day. Um, but yeah, the thing flies. It well, it was it felt else, really good. What else do you expect? Yeah, from was, those things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'd love to. You picked up the the plus mast the I other did. day. Yeah. Because you're on the the high modulus it's, from from code and mm -hmm. then they launched their plus which is an ultra high modulus yes yeah, and i've got the and it's 75 the same, it's the same profile yep. same thickness it's about 100 grams heavier mm -hmm. um but it's just a it's way stiffer and yeah tell me do you feel you feel the difference did you think you'd feel a difference did you think you needed it i, I wasn't sure if i'd feel a difference uh especially because I've been riding the 680, it's a small foil, yeah. right? So, and I'm not the heaviest guy. I mean, you know, I'm 77 kilograms, which isn't like, I think it's more meant for like people who are 80, 85 kilograms plus, but yeah. here's where I saw a lot of benefit from it is riding high on the mast is way easier because the higher you get on the mast, the more, even on the small wings, the more flex you start to feel. Yeah. So with the plus mast, um, I really felt, especially during tip, uh, tip breaches, those tip breaches used to be quite a problem for me. Like even just a, you know, I mean, not like just because I'm really tall, my center of gravity is way high, right? And I t tend to stand pretty erect. I don't have this like super low to the board stance. Yeah. Um, so I kind of ride really relaxed and when I would tip reach, I could feel like I, I would recover, but there was like kind of a lot of wobble, uh, involved. And so now that, uh, that felt like it was gone. I was uh, actually the last post I put up, you can see the, there's a front, there's a toe side tip reach, mm -hmm. which I didn't even, I saw when I saw it on the video, I was like, huh. I didn't, f I didn't even feel that breach. Like yeah. it just, and so yeah, the the mast is definitely, uh, there's definitely a difference. I I can also say that yes, you do kind of feel a little bit of that weight, but the trade off is, yeah, it, the trade off is way higher on the stiffness, uh, on the stiffness side of things than it is on the weight. Yeah, for like, sure. You just. I mean, the code mast in general is a little bit heavier already. Already, yeah, you yeah. Because yeah. it's got this thick yeah. base to it. It was already a beefy. It's already a beefy mast. Uh, you right? feel so. way more con like way more control, and I guess it, that control just translates into confidence, right? Yeah. So you're 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 powering your turns a little bit harder than you normally would because yep. you're not worried about. I mean, it, it that. turned. I used it in Hood River, and it turned the 860R into a surf foil. Yeah, exactly. Like it just, it just exactly. made my turn so yeah. much sharper and more efficient. Yeah. It was like, and, and that, like you said, I'd had no idea that the, I, I can breach the tips and it's fine. Like I don't, yeah. like I can, I can manage to recover yeah, most of exactly. all of that, but you feel it because when, 
when the tips breach, there's this ventilation. So there's this little bit of like, and that, that's, you know, yeah. this instability yeah. for a minute. Yeah. And I had no idea that I was falling because it was, it was causing a wobble in the mast mm. or, un mm. and with the plus it's, it's insane. It, yeah. It, it, I had no idea I needed a, a stiffer mast. So I one of the, need it, but it, yeah, it's so much. One of the things about so the code mass is like, I mean, it, it, I guess it goes for any mast because the less mast in the water, the better, mm -hmm. but with the code mast, especially because it tapers down, mm -hmm. like the higher you can be on that mast. I, I notice it on the 680 when I'm, when, when I'm on, low. when I'm on the low end, like when I'm just on a light day, man, if you, I get high on that mast, yeah. it's just, it just adds so much efficiency to the low end because of that taper on the end and so you know having having that extra sort of rigidity when you're up there yeah it changes huge benefit it changes sure. yeah it's a, it's a huge benefit um so i'm a i'm a huge fan i'm not giving that back to you so sorry <laughs> it's not coming back <laughs> well take it take it to france and then and yeah. yeah once you win all that prize money you can pay oh, for yeah. it oh yeah that's mostly going to be spending. Like I know. Saint Tropez. Ugh. Yeah, it's like the. That's. It's, it's like the like, Saint Saint parts of Europe. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's like a <laughs> scaled down or like maybe slightly. It's like the millionaires version of Monaco. Instead of the billionaires, it's the millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like. Yeah. Yeah. So Fancy. it's gonna. It should Fancy be. Island. No, but I, I actually I, shout out to Fred because. He's actually putting me up. Oh, sick. Um, that's super nice for this trip to France. So thanks for thanks a lot for that, Fred. And um, can't wait to see you, man. Share cool. some times. Yeah, we spent a lot of time in Maui hanging out. And nice, great guy. Do you know if any of the code guys are going to go to this race? Have you reached I, out to them? I don't no? know. Uh, I had I heard I that I had Australia. heard that Marcus. So far from everything, yeah. man. It's crazy. I want to go there too. Actually, I'd yeah. love to travel there for downwinding oh, one day. Man. I've got so many, but yeah, different places to go on my list. That Especially is definitely one of them. I really want to go to Western Australia, and and then, but the Western Australia boys keep telling me that it's South Coast Australia is the best runs, like oh. Melbourne or. I guess somewhere like close to Margaret River apparently is insane downwinding. Um, but I don't know. I th I I had thought that Marcus and Ben were were going, I, and I think I had asked Dan if he was going, and he said he was going to Greece, which is he, I think he's in now. Mm. Uh, but I think, if I remember correctly, he had told me no. Nah, but but Ben and Marcus are going to oh, France. That's cool. So I may, I'm, I'll I'll reach out to them and see. Um, right on. See, but yeah, it'd be awesome to see those guys again. Those guys are a trip, man. And I, sorry, I'm gonna keep delaying this, but uh, meeting all those guys in Hawaii was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was a bit, I was a bit jealous of because uh, the podcasting is not like my full time job, right? It's mm. a it's a it's a pastime. Yeah, and. I'm watching the generic foil podcast, uh, Freddie and Liam, like just like, like do podcast after podcast with all these people. I'm like, ah, oh, Cynthia. I'm like, damn it. Yeah. I want to talk to Cynthia. I'm like the code guys. I'm like, damn it. I'm well, like, but, yeah, I mean, you got to think of like <laughs> AWSI sets you up for the rest of the year. I'm like Josh, who? Josh, like Josh, who? I'm like, fuck. Yeah. I'm like I was going to, and I'm just, you know, I get too busy and distracted. It's too much, man. It's you know? too much. And. But yeah, eventually I'll sit down with all these people and have like a, a casual chit chat. But props to them. I'm stoked that they Do you ever think of doing people. podcasts not in person, like just so, over the web or yeah, I mean Arlen, it's a different thing. But. Arlen told me the other day, he's like, Hey bro, I got a great idea. You should talk to this person. I'm like, Great, revolutionary idea. Talk to somebody, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um I'm like, ah, I'm just not really it's there's so much such a different connection. And I, I have this like video platform and the audio that I do, yeah. and I, I really yeah. love that part of it. So it I works. Kinda, I kind of want to stick to the in person thing because then it, yeah, it makes it more intimate. I like the in person thing, and so I'm not in a rush to like blow this podcast out of the water and, mm -hmm. and get all those interviews in. I used yeah. to do it every Tuesday. You're telling me, oh, we got to do it on Saturday so you can get it up by Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I still got some lined up, yeah, and yeah. I, I scaled it down. So I don't have a schedule anymore, which is really important. It was stressing me out. Yeah. It was like, you know, 
Um, it was just too much work to try to get one out every You've week. You've been getting plenty of stuff out still. I mean, even without the schedule, like there's yeah. been plenty of episodes. Yeah, because I did some stuff in Maui, but Maui was where I was like, oh man, like I was with the family and trying to get downwind runs in. And then I was trying to like, okay, I got to make sure I do all these podcasts. And I was like racking yeah. my brain. It was just too stressful. Yeah. And I was in Maui and I was like busy and I'm like trying to maintain my business. And I was like, I'm, I'm done. And I think, I think that's what's really important about all of this stuff, like the shop and the school and the podcast is that it, the moment that it doesn't turn fun anymore, then what's the point? What's the point? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, hey, bro, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't do it five times a week. Yeah, you know? exactly. Because <laughs> you know? I, I ease up on I it. do that and, and Shadi's the same. She's like, my wife, she's like, man, you do that to yourself. Like you do it every time. Every time you want to do something, you're like, Ah, and you're like you're full on head in but that's know, honestly in, i mean which look. is which is which is the cool thing about it because then yeah. I'm, I'm i get like i'm so passionate about all of these things that i do which is really important but yeah it stressed me out a little bit and i i want to do right by the podcast i want to you know have good conversations and well you, things you've got hats people. now dude you I gotta got do right by. <laughs> <laughs> you got like a box you know, that's, full of hats <laughs> that's just for fun because you know i'm not we don't make no, they're actually really, really nice. Really I gotta nice. get yeah. one. You gotta get one of those. Um, so yeah, I'm just I laid it back a little bit, and I want to put it out whenever I feel like putting it out. That's so funny because uh, I reached out to. That's the that's actually the that's the hat that I le I liked the least. Why? I don't know. It's just not my style. I don't like the unstructured hats. Um, oh, okay, okay, because right? it's soft. So, it's soft. So top. I reached out okay. to Steve, um, uh, Flo. Marley, and nice. I was like, hey guys, pick a hat. I'm gonna send one off to Maui for you guys. I'm like, which hat do you want? Everyone individually, it was four hats that they picked. Every single person picked that hat. I was <laughs> like, well, and now, now you know you which one to make again. over, like, yeah. which one to make a lot of. <laughs> yeah. Well, that one's for, made for the water as well, right? Yeah, so you can okay, take it yeah. in the water too. It'll, so. it'll get wet. Yeah, same with that gray one. You can do that. Um, these are, oh, these are like more structured. Yeah. But yeah, well, thanks for. Thanks for coming on again. It was my good. pleasure, man. It was good to talk to you. And I hope people you know, aren't bored of seeing my ugly face here. I mean, sorry guys. Three three times out of 20, <laughs> 24 episodes, I think yeah. we're okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I it's, mean, it's whoever's good. listening to this, they're just looking to to hear people talking about foiling in general. Yeah. Nothing, nothing too crazy, and everyone has a similar, you know, passion in this. Right, whether it, they're doing it for their job, they're doing it on the weekend or not. So most people can kind of relate to the addiction and discovering <laughs> like where you want to go with all of these sports and you know making mistakes and gear choices and yeah. you know hopefully you know putting two screws in the the foil when you go out to yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do a run. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's oh that ten seventy five. I bye miss bye. it honestly. Like actually, the other day I was thinking about it. I was like, man. When you get a new board, you kind of want to paddle it up, and that 1075 is excellent. For, oh, my God, yeah. Yeah, but it's gone. Oh I'm going to have to buy another one because I've already gone twice to go look for it. Really? Not found it. Oh, damn, that sucks. I mean, <laughs> oh, man. yeah, that carbon is heavy. It'll sink. Yeah, it's probably covered in sand. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Gio. Yeah, and uh, Thank you, luck. dude, good for everything you races, do. Bro. All right, and, thanks. And, uh, yeah, stoked to support you however I can, you know. Appreciate and, uh, it, man. You take, always... take that mast and see if you can do anything with it and then pay me cold, hard cash later. All right. <laughs> I'm, paying. I'm, I'm paying. I'm paying. I'm paying one way or another. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Uh, thanks, everyone. You.